All right, everybody, Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health. We're looking at January 28th today. January has been such an exciting month, and um, all the traffic is up. And, and uh, well, as I mentioned last week, Jimmy Moore interviewed me. Uh, I did a one-hour interview that will be coming out probably not until April. That's unfortunate, but... Uh, you know, I kind of geeked out a little bit too much on the uh, interview. I think it was uh, not my best performance, but I got some good points in there. And, uh, and you know, hopefully there's some people out there that uh, are struggling on low carb like so many uh, people have gravi- gravitated to 180 Degree Health are, are able to hear that podcast and uh, come on over to see what it's all about and also... People who aren't struggling on the uh, on an uber low carb diet, maybe maybe they're going to run into some of the problems that uh, that I talk about and that I mention, and get curious down the line. Anyway, speaking of geeking out, let's. This is just going to be kind of a follow up post, follow up podcast to the post I just did about reducing tissue concentration of omega six fatty acids. So we're going to do a little Barry Sears. Little Barry Sears primer on why that's important, um, and and sorry to make fun of Barry Sears. I I did order one of his audio CDs one time to listen to him talk about the science of icosanoids, and um, yeah, I was uh, I thought he kind of looked geeky and wrote kind of geeky, but you know he's surpassed me in geekiness. There's no question. I'm I'm up there, but but not quite there. But omega-6 is a type of fatty acid. It's a type of polyunsaturated fatty acid. And it's getting a lot of buzz because we have omega-6 and omega-3. And everybody is talking about the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. Now, we eat tons of omega-6. And so, and it's hard to market eating less omega-6. Um, and so, the way of supplements, and it's always been this way with, with the health industry, is... What can I sell you that maybe will address that? And that product, of course, is omega-3, which, as Jenny the Nipper so eloquently put it, is the uh, what is it, the soy, the new soy. <laughs> um, and uh, basically the new soy being the new health product that everybody's promoting that really has a whole set of uh, problems on its own, isn't really something that is uh, just profoundly desirable. It just so happens to be something that can help to offset taking in too much omega-6. Just like doing a lot of cardio can help offset taking in too much fructose. But we don't, you know, there's a much easier, much more rational approach, a much more effective approach. And that is uh, cutting out fructose on, in the, the analogy on that side, but also cutting out omega-6. Now, the problem is that omega-6... It accumulates on the cellular level. And Barry Sears has come out with a blood test for omega-6. Um, I don't know if he developed it, but he certainly started promoting it and selling it. I know that Dr. William Davis of the Heart Scan blog is also promoting a testing kit to test your omega-6 to omega-3 ratios. And it's an important test, and it's certainly associated with higher uh, heart disease risk and risk for several degenerative diseases that have their roots in inflammation. Now, why would that be? Why, why would having a lot of omega-6 in your tissues uh, versus your omega-3, why would that cause inflammation? Well, you know, a lot of the information against condemning omega-6 is theoretical. Now, it's a polyunsaturated fatty acid. It's highly volatile. It, you know, becomes rancid very easily. So it does a lot of oxidative damage, and it basically saps your body of vitamin E. Um, This free radical damage is highly carcinogenic. There's a whole list of problems there, but just relating back to the omega-6, it's basically a precursor to a type of hormone. It's an autocrine hormone, which is everyone's probably familiar with the endocrine system, but the autocrine system is a cellular uh, hormonal producing system. And it produces these uh, things called icosanoids. Um, these icosanoids basically are derived from these uh, either long-chain omega-3 fatty acids 
or a type of omega-6 fatty acid called arachidonic acid, or AA for short. Um, and basically, these two types of eicosanoids, like most things in the body, they have diametrically opposed functions. So you have one type of eicosanoid that promotes inflammation, one type of eicosanoid on the other side of the fence that in, inhibits uh inflammation so it's kind of a balancing system which is why you can see why you would want to have a one-to-one -one ratio in your tissues if they sort of have these diametrically opposed functions you wouldn't want to have too much omega-3 you wouldn't want to have too much omega-6 or else things can kind of go haywire now I had some problems with this thesis because I'm a firm believer that you are not what you eat you're what your body does with what you eat um, I, di I didn't believe that just eating omega-6, the body would just be catapulted into this hyper-inflammatory state. Um, but there is potential because you are actually what you eat when it comes to these fatty acids because you will accumulate these fatty acids in your tissues. Your cells will become composed more of omega-6 than omega-3, so it actually does change you. Your physical structure is different when you consume a lot of this omega-6 fatty acids. Now, omega-6, as mentioned in the post, that comes primarily from vegetable oils. It also comes from animal fats, um, particularly from poultry and pork that have been fed a lot of this uh, uh, omega-6-based uh, substances, vegetable oils, corn, grain, and their fatty acid profiles become imbalanced just as ours do. They accumulate a bunch of that type of fat in their tissues. So I'm not saying to be phobic about pork and poultry, but trying to overcome an imbalance, it may be worthy of your consideration taking a look into that and trying to really have a concentrated effort so that you can counterbalance an imbalance. Because that's really what health manipulation is all about. I mean, we could talk about healthy diets till we're blue in the face, but really to get results and improve your health, the human body, it's all, always about getting it back to homeostasis uh, and balance. Okay, so uh, basically getting uh, a lot, uh, you know, a lot less omega-6, that's really one of those things that if you have a concentrated effort, you can actually start to overcome that imbalance and have some results. Now, I haven't really ever gone through the process of of getting really, really low in omega-6, like uh, Ray Pete, who's a researcher, uh, recommends. Um, there may be a lot of validity to that. There may not be. My experiences have always been that sugar is the, the big bad wolf, and and uh, but I certainly appreciate the science uh, of eicosanoids, of the autocrine hormones, and how they are impacted by these, uh, uh, you know, the fatty acid content in our diets. And so it's a very, very intriguing thing. I'm not going to dwell on it or make a huge issue about it and, and go on a huge tangent because I don't think that, you know, like I said, it's the, the major focus, but it's certainly up there. And I think it's something that uh, is worthy of us giving it a little bit of our attention. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, quite frankly, this accumulation of, of omega-6, it being inflammatory in nature, and thrusting us into a hyperinflammatory state uh, is very, very significant because all the research out there coming from the universities is saying it's all about inflammation, it's all about inflammation, it's all about inflammation. Well, why is it all about inflammation? And, and for those who have read 180 Degree Diabetes or have uh, read anything that I've written about cortisol, you know, cortisol is, is the hormone that's secreted basically to mitigate some of that inflammation. It's, it's secreted in response uh, to inflammation. So the more inflammation you have, the more cortisol you have. And if cortisol blocks the action of thyroid hormones and makes you insulin resistant and so forth, well, then you have a serious problem. Um, then you're getting into the realm of metabolic syndrome and whatnot. So it's very possible that reducing this omega-6 can lower our cortisol and uh, help our glucose metabolism and all the things that uh, 
we're trying to achieve at 180 degree health, including bringing that metabolism up. But uh, that's all for this topic. We'll get into something next week. Thanks again. This is Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health.